Welcome back. It is due to hit in about an hour or so. Hurricane Michael has been upgraded to an extremely dangerous Category 4 storm. There are warnings about life-threatening storm surges, winds of 230 kilometers an hour, heavy rainfall, and also floods. Hundreds of thousands have been told to leave their homes. Florida's governor has called it a monstrous storm and urged people to follow advice. Many, though, have decided to stay put. Well, Ryan Tuchler is a meteorologist with uh, Weather Tiger based in Tallahassee in Florida. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, this looks extremely strong, this storm. Is it still strengthening? Unfortunately, it still appears to be strengthening. Uh, we've got several airplanes flying recon, and on each pass, they're finding lower and lower minimum central pressure. So as far as we can tell, this is continuing to strengthen. We're about two and a half hours away from landfall. Uh, just hoping that the intensity at least levels off before it comes inland. You have experience of things like this. There'll be people watching around the world. What is it like to be there in place when one of these hurricanes hits? Well, there's a sense of powerlessness with it. You you prepare, you, you try to do what you can to to uh, to ready your homes and, and your property. But there's nothing, there's nothing that you can really do in the end, uh, you know, other than... Uh, other than you know, take some logical steps to secure life and property and evacuate when you're told to. Uh, you know, especially if you're in a coastal flood area, uh, this is a very, very serious. Perhaps the most significant impact of this is going to be the 10 to 15 feet of surge along and to the right of the track in the Florida Panhandle. Um, you know, there's no, there's no escaping from surge. It's, uh, it's, it's what kills 90% of people uh, in hurricanes and. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the most extreme risks from this storm. We were looking at pictures from space and you can so clearly see just the size of this storm that the governor has been calling monstrous in terms of uh, the size of it. Uh, the floods have come already. I'm going to take you to uh, the live pictures and show our viewers what is happening there now in the minutes ahead of uh, the eye of the storm actually hitting. Uh, you were talking there about the storm surges. Uh, just take me through the biggest dangers. Is that the biggest danger? That is likely the single biggest danger, although wind impacts are going to be extreme as well across the Florida Panhandle. Uh, the Florida Panhandle, uh, it's very flat. Uh, the, the border between the Gulf of Mexico and, and where, where Florida ends and the Gulf of Mexico begins is not clear uh, in some places in, in the Florida Big Bend. So that means that when you have 10 to 15 feet of surge, it can go miles and miles inland. So we needed to evacuate people out of not just the immediate coast, but out of the southern third or, or southern tier of uh, many of our coastal counties in Florida. And this is an unprecedented threat. I mean, this is the strongest storm to make landfall in the Florida Panhandle in at least 150 years. And tell me a little about uh, the, the weather system as a whole, because with Hurricane Florence, it, it sat there overland for some time and that added to the, the dangers and the consequences, didn't it? What is it like this time around? Is it thought it will pass quickly or do the same thing? This is a very different situation than Hurricane Florence or Hurricane Harvey last year, which stalled over a single location and dropped flooding rainfall. Uh, this storm is going to be moving 20 to 25 miles per hour as it moves northeast and inland into the Florida Big Bend over the next few hours. Uh, and that presents a different set of risks because as a storm is it's, it's maintaining its intensity and strengthening to landfall and it's moving very quickly so it's going to bring damaging winds not only to the coast where winds are going to be you know, over 130 miles per hour in some sections of the Florida coast but we'll also see hurricane force wind gusts well inland across all of North Florida including Tallahassee where I'm based as well as into southwest Georgia. So rainfall impacts are more moderate this time. We're talking about more along the lines of, of five to 10 inches of rainfall instead of the three to four feet that uh, we're seeing from, uh, from Florence and Harvey. Ryan, briefly, we're looking at pictures just tracking this thing, but uh, I, I mean, we talked about Florence, but why is it so bad this year? Well, it's, it's a matter of, of, of bad timing. Uh, I mean, it's what's really unprecedented about about uh, Michael's landfall here in the Panhandle is you do not typically see hurricanes intensify up to landfall. The northeastern Gulf of Mexico is usually too cool in October to support uh, extremely intense storms. So if they, as they move north, they begin to fall apart and the overall impact is lower. That's not the case, uh, that's not the case with, with Hurricane Michael, unfortunately. It's intensifying, pressure is continuing to drop 
right up to the coast, and that's going to that's going to greatly in, uh, increase the expected damages here. Well, Ryan, perhaps we'll talk again in the couple of uh, next couple of hours. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on today's program. Thanks for your time.